hi, Justyna and Kuba. We are a couple from Poland who travels around Europe in a search of traces of our prehistory and inspiring places. And everything we find, we share with you in our videos. Have you been in Lascaux 4, which is a perfectly made replica of the original Lascaux cave? Lascaux cave is a Paleolithic sanctuary dated to 21,000 years ago. I repeat the dating after the guide in the copy of the cave. And it is famous from the absolutely stunning parietal art. Lascaux was accidentally discovered in 1940 by four boys. Pretty soon it was opened to the public for sightseeing. But its incredible popularity destabilized fragile environment inside the cave and the paintings began to disintegrate. None of the conservatory solutions brought any improvement, so in 1963 the bronze door separated the cave from the outside world. Some copies were created. The current replica was opened to the public in 2016. We visited it in June last year. In this video we pay tribute to Yves Copin, who was a professor at the Collège de France and the Muséum National de Histoire Naturelle. He was an icon of French paleontology. Was. In Lascaux 4 we bought most official album of this site. We just wanted something at home that would remind us of the frescoes we had seen. But we didn't even know what jewel we would find in the preface. This gem was a foreword written by Yves Copin. We opened the album and read his words after visiting the replica of this stunning Paleolithic sanctuary in the days when the professor left us. It was my first encounter with the thought of Yves Copin's and I found his point of view very inspiring. Text seems very interesting to me and the circumstances in which I read it emphasize the words of the researcher. So I am happy to tell you what Yves Copin's wrote in the foreword to our edition of All Lasco. Vertebrates have evolved over more than 500 million years. After this time, in a one moment, like a clap of a hand, genus Homo, or human being, enters the arena of the natural world. As a scientist associated with the discovery of a prominent Australopithecus named Lucy, Yves Copin speaks about 3 million years. However, my journalistic responsibility makes me mention here the traces of hominins from Trachilos in Crete, dated for almost 6 million years. Anyway, Lucy was proclaimed the mother of mankind and has become a symbol of the origins of mankind. And Lascaux has become a symbol of the origin of art. So here we are. During the whole evolution of life, nature follows the way of increasing diversity, but with better and better control. It also drifts into an ever larger complexity, but with greater organization. To these paradoxes, human genus adds a greater freedom, but paired with responsibility. Human genus woke up with level of consciousness never reached until then. It means that nature, for the first time, takes care of the individual, the person. Man is completely man as soon as he appears, immediately worried about death, immediately religious. In no primary culture, death is the end of life. For the first time in the evolution of nature, man is capable of inventing the cultural environment within the natural environment. It is possible because of possession of an extravagant and novel range of attributes, at once cognitive, intellectual, technical, aesthetic, ethical and spiritual. André Leroy-Gouron said, There is no art without techniques, there is no technique without art. And here is a quote from Yves Copin. All of this justifies my feeling, without being able to prove it, 
that the attributes mentioned above emerge at once and at the same time, contrary to a progressive and successive vision of their appearance. Concerning religion, to my eyes it constitutes the mind's organization of spirituality. When talking about man, it is worth defining the word culture, because there are many such definitions. For example, in the mid-20th century, over, over 100 definitions of the word culture were collected. I understand the word culture classically. Culture is an artificial additional environment that man always creates within the natural environment. If Copens uses the word detachment here. Human can't live in only nature. People, human beings, always create this additional, it is cultural environment, which is their real living environment. From the first individuals of genus Homo in nature, we have seen him detach himself more and more from the animal world by adding this paradox of freedom and responsibility. Mankind has even cultural obsession and spiritual obsession, for example, the preservation at any cost of the person, perhaps even its extension beyond his or her material disappearance. It is this responsibility that we can call spirit, which makes mankind, since his beginnings, whether he likes it or not, a being of dignity and of symbols. The first worked stones were discovered in Ethiopia. They are more than three million years old. And the oldest symmetrically worked stones are 1.7 million years old. Work stones, they are not only tools, but also a sculpture and the dawn of a symbol. There is no symbol without men, nor is there men without symbols. An outstanding primatologist, Tetsuro Matsuzawa, noticed in his works that people pay special attention to the face. Well, look, this small red-brown jasperite pebble recalling a face was discovered at the prehistoric site Makapansgat in South Africa. It is over three million years old. It is natural, but it was found in the cave in the same level as Australopithecines remains, with many reservations. It is possible that Australopithecines brought this stone there. But here is another shape. This piece of the volcanic tuff was a bit sculptured into the shape of a female figure. It comes from Barakat Ram in Israel and is about 260,000 years old. And, for example, this. About 75,000 years ago, some Neanderthal take a piece of flint, retouched it a little, and pushed a piece of a bone through a hole in the stone, then wedged it with small pebbles. The effect is rather striking. This amazing face was found in the Rochecotard cave in France. Speaking of art, ochre should be mentioned, which is most widespread natural coloring matter in prehistory. Mostly red, but also the variety of hues from yellow to dark brown. It was used for painting in rituals, for the preservation and processing of leather and probably for many other purposes. Pieces of ochre were even found scattered over the floor of the Achillean habitation of Isernia La Pineta in Italy. The place is dated back to 700,000 years old. Music. Whistles dating to circa 200,000 years made of bone were found in various sites in Central Europe. From Swabian Alp in Germany come bone flutes dating back about 40,000 years. In the background are the sounds of flutes from the Swabian Alp reconstructed at the Blaubeuren Prehistory Museum. If music, then probably also dance. Footprints of Paleolithic rhythmic steps have been found, for example, in the cave Duc d'Aubach in France. In conclusion from contemporary tribal cultures, Ritual festivals can be as old as humanity. 
obviously they must have been accompanied by dancing and music. So we have gestures which are new gestures in the whole history of matter, sacred gestures. When speaking of sacred gestures, Sima de los Huesos comes to my mind. It is a natural sinkhole at the site of Atapuerca in Spain. This sinkhole was used from 500,000 to 300,000 years ago as a burial shaft. More than 3,000 human skeletal remains has been deposited in this shaft, symbolically accompanied by a biophise. For the quality and the blood red color of this biophise, Spanish researchers named it Excalibur. Yves Copin, album or Lascaux, the Lascaux itself, a sanctuary decorated 21,000 years ago. Decorated by Homo sapiens like you and me, Lascaux affects you and astonishes you each time you visit it. One feels great emotions and aesthetic shock there, comparable to what is felt before the canvas of great master, but also the sensation of entering a site full of meaning, sacredness, with many complex signs consummately inscribed on the walls. You want to say, now if Copain is happy talking to the creators of cave sanctuaries from the Dordogne in France and finding out everything thoroughly. And here we are going to look at the Lascaux Sanctuary, but in the next video. So please subscribe so as not to miss this story and till the next time. Bye bye.